hello again, Ian Stick with Mastermind Games, and time for the last of the explorers from Blackstone Fortress. Amal and Shadow Guide, the Eldar Ranger. I guess a Surian. Okay. Fair skin, 09047. So, she is from the now fractured or destroyed, possibly craft world of Beltan. I have no idea what that is. Or oh, whatever. So, she's from a dead craft world, more or less. And her goal on the Blackstone Fortress is to find a relic that may restore it. Okay. Okay, this brush is not good at all. Must be defective. Alright, try a different one. It's all stiff. Okay, glued it shut. Weird. Alright. That's all the skin that's showing. Just a little bit under the hood. Above that Sub-Zero Scorpion-like mask. And I am referencing Mortal Kombat there. I'm gonna try something a little different on our armor. So pure white 09039. So pretty much fast, agile, uh, sniper type here. Definitely best kept back. So. The armor I'm going to do a standard white highlight with, or shade with gray, and then some metallic white to highlight. We'll see how well it works. But in all honesty, I do not know too much about the Eldar. Though I do like the bright color schemes they tend towards, so I'll just I don't have any plans to go Eldar anytime soon. The next 40k faction I pick up is going to be Chaos Space Marines, but I don't know when just yet. I think, though, I want to finish maximizing the existing units I have before I move on to a new faction. And while her armor is form-fitting, she is covered from the neck down. I guess this sense for whatever it is is part of it. The armor as well. Do it in the same color scheme. And that beeping leaves my laundry is ready, but I can finish this first. Alright. Now just finish up this hose here. There. What 
this to be fairly bright after all. All right, we'll let that dry move on a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and do the brown next. So shield brown zero nine one six one. And in this case, I am following what's, quote, official fairly closely. I'm not going to bother doing every single detail exactly as the uh, little guide states, but... Mm. The, it's overall an okay color scheme. I don't see anything particularly wrong, right or wrong with it. I can't think of a better idea, so... Hmm. A bit of a loss to where that sleeve ends and the armor begins. But it's okay, I got it. Hmm. back to that. Yeah. All right, never mind. Got a different idea. Okay. Stormy Gray 09088. I'm going to switch to a broader brush to finish up the bulk of the rifle.
All right. Gonna have to let it dry for a bit before. No, no, it's gonna have to dry before I move on. So just let it go for now. All right. Leaf green is next. Zero nine zero one one. Getting there, I just don't feel like talking right this minute.
Oh, I think I'm going crazy there. Okay. Okay. I can do one more right now. It's going to be Tarnished Steel 09206. part that's going on is her blade. See, we'll get a bit of green over here by the cave one I missed. Okay. Maybe touch that a little over here. Just one more color I need to, or base coat I need to do, and then I can move on to shading. Uh, coming along nicely so far. Alright, last base coat, Antique Gold 09050. Get a little touch up on some of the green off camera. Belt in this crystal, which is apparently a rare teleportation device, which she can use in uh, games of Blackstone Fortress to her advantage. she can use it in regular games of 40k but uh, I haven't done much more than skim the rules for her just because I don't since I'm you know could be years before I even think about collecting Eldar certain what these are intended to be, but they look like big bullets to me. Maybe some kind of rifle grenade or spare magazines for the weapon, I don't know. Get the soul stone on her chest. So yeah, the uh, Eldar wound up creating the Chaos God Slanesh at the height of their empire and to uh, preserve their and essentially Slanesh has uh, dibs on all Eldar souls so the Eldar I or Craftworld Eldar use soul stones to keep their souls on or to keep Slanesh's filthy mitts off of their souls Okay, let's see here, that's pretty good. So that gets it down to shading and lighting effects. Her masking's a little touch up right there, but. Uh oh. In good shape, so. Let that dry and then start uh, shading and lighting. Okay, time to start shading. Ancient Bronze 09049.
time. I think I can go ahead and do the brown, so Woodstain Brown 09160. I can do the steel as well, so black and steel 09205. before moving on, so back in a minute, but we're getting there. Alright, pure black, 09037. Thinning this one out more than typical. Excuse me. And pine green zero nine zero one zero. Yep, this one's plugged up. Starting with the areas that are furthest away from the gray I just shaded. We're trying to
of her cloak will be done last. For all, anyway. That's just only the flesh tone and the white, so, well, and some flying effects, so, back in a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, wasn't sure it wasn't working. Fair Shadow 09046. Just need the tiniest dot of this. Tiny speck of flesh yellow showing. And now rainy gray zero nine zero three eight. This uh, is an experiment to me, so I don't know if it's going to work out like I think it will or not, but I'll find out. <clears throat> Just like with uh, the um, Deccan Grex flesh last time. And I have an idea how it might turn out, but in the end, I don't know and won't know until it's all said and done. Trying not to get the green nick, but we're breastplate covered fairly thoroughly. The real test of this, though, will be when I apply the highlight. All right. Now I need to just let that dry, and then when it does, I can start on the light and effects and the eyes. Okay, it's time to work on the lighting effects. <laughs> so I've been reading the uh, 40k book, Lords of Silence. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can't even 
even talk about the straight face. <laughs> right, I'm gonna carefully get this in the eyes here. <sighs> I'll let a little bit of water in it. I'm gonna have to reshade the green here if I can't get that soaked up. Because I want that to be very dark in contrast to. Alright, I think that's got it. But. Uh, place during the siege of Acadia during the 13th Black Crusade and uh, <laughs> the commander of this ship <laughs> comes across a very suspicious enemy frigate carrying a that turns out to be carrying a very deadly weapon and orders off all the nastiness stored up inside his ship, which again is a death card, spewed out all at once on this Imperium ship. And this basically amounts to his ship taking a <laughs> taking a dump <laughs> on the enemy ship. I can't even say it without laughing. It's just it's just fairly absurd for Warhammer in general. <laughs> but <laughs> it makes perfect sense for Death Guard, but <laughs> that's what it amounts to. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay, I think that's got all the uh, lighting effect stuff I need to worry about, so I'll let that dry up and then uh, get on to lighting it up. <laughs> oh my. Hey, <laughs> Pure Black 09037. <laughs> yeah, it's only been a few minutes since I recorded the last segment, and that whole Death Guard thing is still hilarious. Yeah, I'm not one for toilet humor in general, but every once in a while, something just, uh, <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to carefully dot in her pupils. And as far as I know, the Eldar have, you know, conventional eyes anyway. Barrel of a rifle. Then, yeah, sparkling amethyst. Uh, zero nine one zero five. I'm having some trouble with this one. Hopefully, it works a little better. It did last time. Oh, come on, play nice, please. Nope. I got a little out of it, but a little's all I'm gonna need. <clears throat> so apparently this is supposed to be a power blade she's carrying, so... We'll go ahead and... indentation, and then do a second layer of shading on the blade reflect it being a power weapon. It's kind of one of my things. Go a little heavier. 
Okay. Sparkling blue zero nine one zero four. For some reason, my work cable is uh, not even. And this is just going to go exclusively on this uh, teleport crystal thing. I went a bit too far on that. Let's soak some of that up. I think a little bit. Okay. that and then coppery orange zero nine one zero two <laughs> Stone. A little more on the stone. That charm. No rival. Okay. Hmm. That rifle a little bit. Kind of better, okay. Okay, let that dry, and then I can start highlighting in detail once it does. Alright, time to highlight now that this is all dried up. Fair highlights 09048. See if my experiment works or not. Pearl white zero nine one zero zero. This is a metallic white. A little more straight paint where that purple tip touched the hand. I want to highlight that soul stone as well, and then this crystal here. I can't remember the name of it, but it is important. And then I'm going to highlight the uh, power sword with it, or power blade with this, whatever it's called. Use this instead of the uh, true silver. Okay. Oh, 
almost forgot a little bit on the uh, rifle there. Forgot to nick the jewel here. Okay, so that part of it turned out well, I think. Griffwood Brown, 09162. Mm. Yeah, this one's next. And switching brushes since I have some to spare. Now, pale green zero nine zero one two. New gold zero nine zero five one. Going to need a smaller brush to do this properly. been making a lot of noise down there today, but they at least have not been yelling at each other today. All right, that's got it. The only thing left now is to, uh, Line the base with pure black, 09037. Which I will 
likely have to uh, replace soon. So my little experiment with using a pure white, rainy gray, and pearl white I think worked out reasonably well. So, yay. Don't know how well you can see the uh, sheen on it, but I like the way it worked out. I have to keep this. And I cocked my camera with my brush. I have to keep that in mind for future models and whatnot. Alright, just two steps left and we'll be done. Time to base. Huh, weird, okay. I've already got some glue solution uh, mixed up. Just need to find a uh, sacrificial brush there. This is again a mix of white glue and water. Just a little more water. Carefully painting that around her feet. Just be nice and just be very fluid. This is maybe a bit uh, too gooey, but I think I can go ahead and work with it anyway. Dip it in the uh, rock debris I've got off side, to the side. It's a pretty good coat. I'm going to take my spare brush, just per usual, just dusting it away from where I don't want it. I just need to set for a little bit before I seal it. But we are just about done. Alright, last step. Sprayer brush on adhesive. Glass eyedropper. And carefully drip around the uh, toes here. You want a solid coverage. But you do need to let your material set first. Otherwise this will only push it around and make little divots. So... Cleaning up, that is that Mark Amelin Shadow Guide. And this is the last of the Explorers for Blackstone Fortress. Oh, come on, focus, please. This camera, I tell you, it's a better than my old one, but it does have its share of frustrations. So, hmm. Well, I might break away and do a War Machine video, I might continue on with the Hostiles and Blackstone Fortress, but either way, until next time, I am Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.